All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Java on devices, about performance tuning for the ARM platform, and 3D printing. Sound good? Okay, I take that as a yes. <laughs> um, so first, a little bit about me. So my name is Stephen Chin, and I'm Java Community Manager, and I um, help to run the global Java community, which includes all of these different items. Hmm. So how are we doing on stickers? Hmm? I think a lot of people don't have stickers yet. No. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna have to fix this. Okay, so let's start with user groups. So who, who's a member of a user group? User group and a member. Or uh, who's a member of a, um, what is this, developer? Oh, it's not only Java. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, what, what does this TDSD stand for? T T uh, okay, so who's a member of a developer community? Oh, okay, everybody, <laughs> everybody <laughs> should raise their hand. Okay, so let's see. Um, who doesn't have a sticker? Uh, so which which developer community do you belong to? Oh, just just TDC. TDC. Okay, very good. Sticker. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be boring. Okay, and worldwide there's nine million Java developers. Who's a who's a Java developer in the room? Java no hmm? hmm? Okay. Okay. So um in the back, in the blue shirt. Yeah, yeah. Um what Java technology do you use? Oh, which which one? Which one? Yeah, um, in, in, in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gra gra yeah, 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 with glasses. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Ano, do you use Java no technology to call it Oh, web apps. Web apps. What like what framework though? Ah, uh, don't know framework to call it. And, and talking to them. Ah. <laughs> Oh, uh, struts and uh, uh, his original. Oh, okay. Framework. Very good. Sicker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, and there's a uh, 150 Java champions worldwide, um, and 50 Java user groups contributing to the JCP. So, um, what does this stand for? What does JCP stand for? Does anyone know? JCP te nan desho? Ano, dare ka shite masu ka? No, no. Okay, Let, let's try this. A little easier. What does the J in JCP stand for? And somebody without a sticker has to answer. Sticker not enough to answer. Okay. 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 Anyone? Yeah, who? 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 Um, it, it also it's written here. Oh. Yeah. So you have good eyesight as well. <laughs> so all of the Java EE specs, this is this is how they get created with the, um, um, by submitting specs to the Java community process and then people who are part of the JCP like um, Sebastian work on the specs and then bring them into implementations like um, Jacks RS and other specs. Okay, so this is my day job, managing all the community stuff. 
But what I want to talk to you about is something I think that's even harder. Okay, so anybody, does anybody have a super, a uh, Famcom? Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah, you too. Uh, anyone else have Famcom? Famcom or Super Famcom is okay too. You have, you have both. <laughs> <laughs> very good, you're the gamer in the audience. What's your, what's your favorite game? Super Mario. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, so I think I think we need to um, we need to play have a little challenge. I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you. <laughs> so I have a I have a gaming console for you, and I have my own gaming console too. It's a it's a pretty good one. It's called it's called NetBeans. Anyone use NetBeans here? Oh, NetBeans, no NetBeans. Ah, oh, we have one NetBeans user. Do you, you play games in NetBeans, Sebastian? Not yet. Not yet. Programming <laughs> games. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run the same version, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a speed run through the um, first level of Mario, and see who can get to the flag first. <laughs> okay, so um, are, are you at the beginning of the stage? Or? Okay. If you're in the middle, just die. <laughs> Fall in a pit. <laughs> and then. Okay, good. Alright, so tell, tell us when to go, Sebastian. Oh. Oh, all right, and we're gonna we're gonna do some Mario action. So this this Mario is um, a pure Java emulator, so it's running using Java technology. Uh uh, anyone know what's here? There's a secret. Oh, oh, uh. <laughs> I was too slow. All right, I gotta try again. Oh no, beginning. I didn't make it far enough. Now I have to rush. See, I was wasting too much time. Oh. But I wanna play in the pipe. Oh, coins. Oops. <laughs> Oh, I'm not doing very good. This is this is not looking good. Oh, I got the halfway point. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Keyboard's hard to do. Oh, flag. <laughs> All right, how are you doing? Almost there? Oh, you got the Fario Mario. So I think you're, I think you're enjoying playing too much that you weren't racing at your fastest, maybe. Oh, flag. All right, round of applause. Very good. Um, so please um, pass um, around so other people can try. And you know, play a little bit and then pass to the next person. You can you can take your time. Don't worry about the noise. Okay, so we, we were we were playing a little bit of a little bit of Mario. And the device which we were playing on is actually built using a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi de Tsukurarita. So does does anyone have a Raspberry Pi? Oh, oh, okay. So, so what what sort of projects? What what have you done with your Raspberry Pi? Anything? Oh, you hook up to the TV. Media center? Media center? Media center? Media center? 
Oh, okay, Sugoi. <laughs> how about how about you? Any projects you do with your Raspberry Pi? Just like PC, just just uh, using using the PC. That's that's good. That's yeah. Right. So you're programming on it. Very good. Um, so the Raspberry Pi, I think the most interesting use of it is the GPIO pins here, because mm. those let you hook up little like switches, mm. buttons, um, sensors. Like um, if you have a cell phone, the games where you control the motion with an accelerometer, you could hook up accelerometer to the Raspberry Pi. You can also hook up a display, keyboard, mouse, use it like a computer. Um, has Ethernet port, has an SD card for the hard drive, and it's powered off micro USB. Okay, so anyone want to guess what these two ports on top of the Raspberry Pi are for? Uh, maybe. Uh, Sebastian. I think we need a hint, but you're only allowed to answer if you don't have a sticker. <laughs> Come on, Sebastian, where's your hint? Oh, oh what's Sebastian holding? <laughs> oh, oh. Do you have a sticker yet? <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> camera, very good. <laughs> sticker. So um, one of them's for a camera. You have a little pinpoint camera that's attached to it. And the other one's for a display. So you can hook up a touchscreen display. The Raspberry Pi Foundation sells a 7-inch um, display. So because the um, RetroPie is smaller, we need to use a smaller display. Um, so here are some options for hooking up small displays to the Raspberry Pi. You can, you can use composite, HDMI, SPI, or device tree. So I, I think these first two are probably familiar. Um, the third one here, SPI, this is a a bus called the Serial Peripheral Interface. It's normally designed for hooking up sensors, like you can hook up RFID modules to the Raspberry Pi over SPI. If you use it for a screen, it's possible, but it's relatively slow, 10 to 15 frames per second. <laughs> and the last one is device tree support. And the way the device tree support works is you drop a a file into the boot sector to remap the pins and it, you replace the operation of the GPIO pins with LCD, a native LCD um, pin and then you can use this board called the KIPA to wire the GPIO pins to a normal LCD header. Um, let's see. So the challenge with this is <laughs> it's good because it's, it's fast and it's very energy efficient. You're just remapping pins, so it's a native LCD interface. And it supports touch as well. The problem is it uses all of your GPIO pins. Oh. It uses SPI. Oh, so the GPIO no, ano, pin. Po, po, po. Yeah, pin, pin. pin. pin so um, you only have six GPIO pins left over once you put the device tree file in. Okay, so how many, how many buttons are on an NES controller? Okay, so how many buttons are on an NES controller? 
、結局そのボタンが一つ一つはこの GPIO につながっていくみたいなんですけど。Okay, so just for a sec, pass it to somebody who doesn't have a sticker. Can you pass the. No, no, no. No, no. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, so would you mind helping us and count the number of buttons? Ah, excellent. Sticker. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good job. And actually, you're, you're the. Pleased to him.、Uh, yeah. um, you're the first person to get the right number of buttons correct for the tour. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, in Japan. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> So, normally people get confused with the D pad because they think it's one button or they think it's something, but it's actually four buttons one for up, one for down, one for left, and one for right. Okay, so if you play Mario and you beat the first stage, After you beat it, after you beat the first world, this is the message you get. Not very. So, my daughter played Mario first on the RetroPie. She is 13, and when she saw this message, she was in tears. My daughter is 13. Yeah, she's used to when you, like, a, like the newer games, when you beat a world, there's a big celebration and dancing. And, and this, is, this is how I felt when I realized I was short two pins, right? We have eight buttons and only six GPIO pins. Okay, so this, this was my workaround.、Um, so I took the left and the right pins and I hooked it up to the start button and I put a couple diodes in here. So, diode to my day, a start button, a left or right, or those in the target in the so what happens is when you press the start button, it's going to simultaneously press the left and the right buttons. At the same time, which normally the controller you can't press left and right, you can only press one. And the same thing for select. So select maps to up and down. So、um, this is a Interesting workaround, although there's one case where it、um, doesn't work.、まあ、so maybe think about this and we'll come back to it. So, okay, so this is the wiring on the breadboard to the kippa.、まあね、kippa And I made a little controller out of a breadboard.、Um, soldered wires to the kippa using.、Um, um, you need some heat shrink tubing as well.、ね、And then here's the finished electronics for the RetroPie. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about software. So I used、um, a project called Half NES that was written by Andrew Hoffman from the University of California, Irvine.
And it's a pure Java emulator, um, very accurate, and um, it also can run on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and if you use NetBeans, you can deploy directly to the Raspberry Pi from the IDE. Uh, and now you have a working emulator on the um, on the hardware, the raw hardware. Uh, Maybe electronics is a better word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's fine. Anyway, it's working. So there's a problem with this. And the problem is, um, in the original half NES code base, it's designed for desktop. And so the, oh, I pressed it by accident. The performance is very bad, six frames per second. Is it, is it on the Raspberry Pi side? You mean yeah, on the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Yeah. yeah. Desktop, uh, very fast. Okay. Raspberry Pi, six. So, what is the desktop? So, I did some uh, Raspberry Pi is very fast. Raspberry Pi So, I did some performance tuning in NetBeans using the profiler um, and looked for places in the code which were um, causing performance slowdown. Here are some of the things which I changed in the code base. So originally using Swing Video via X Windows, and I changed it to use JavaFX, which is much faster. Swing Video JavaFX. JavaFX. Yeah. JavaFX. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's right. So you, you know JavaFX, maybe you've heard of it? Have you heard of JavaFX before? Ah, very good. Who's, who's, heard, who's heard of JavaFX or tried it? Ah, very good. Okay, so I also wrote a book on JavaFX. You wrote a book? Yeah. Um, the other thing I changed is I did synchronization. I changed the synchronization between the CPU, the PPU, and the APU to be once per line instead of once per pixel. Um, also, there were some helper functions for doing bit operations. And I replaced the helper functions with, I basically inlined it. I put the, the bit, bit mask operations directly in the code base with some regular expressions. Also, I extracted some of the PPU operations that were happening once per pixel or line to happen once per frame instead. Um, replace some APU um, double math with longs. So double math is slower, floating point slower. The long arithmetic is much, much faster on the Raspberry Pi. Double math is very fast. Um, and also, I tried to take the array access and modify it to use unsafe to avoid um, bounce checks. Bounce check to you know, save time any unsafe key you the array access or see you in stuff. But it, it turns out this doesn't actually help. Um, the just in time compiler is smart enough to automatically do these sort of optimizations. And you shouldn't really use unsafe anyway because it's gonna everything there is not supported. Um, 
Um, I also replaced some loops with system array copy, but this is redundant because there's already a compiler intrinsic which does this on runtime. Um, and the last thing which helped quite a bit was to delay the audio buffer flushes. Instead of flushing the buffer once per frame, I flush it once every fourth frame. Um, but the disadvantage is sound effects in the game are slightly delayed. But very minor. Okay, so last thing is 3D printing. So who who has a 3D printer? 3D printer. No. Okay, so maybe maybe the the um your developer community needs a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, maybe in the future. <laughs> that way these members can, you know, share. Um, so 3D printing, I think, is it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. The way it works is you, you have a spool of plastic um, and it gets pushed through a tube and then at this end there's a hot end which is heated up to 210 degrees that melts the plastic and then it draws objects one layer at a time and slowly builds up complex 3D geometries and the, the technology for 3D printing um, used to be just for industrial use, but it's gotten cheap enough that you can you can buy home 3D printers and do it um, at your work or home place. And it's particularly good for prototyping things so for creating new designs like the um that and then you know building it mm. and experimenting mm. Mm. so for this um case i did the um design in autodesk um fusion 360 360. Yeah, I think that's right. Auto, Auto, Autodesk Fusion 360. Auto, Auto, yeah. Um, and the software is free for students or hobbyists. Mm -hmm. So they have a free license if you're not using it for commercial purpose. Sorry. Um, the software lets you specify the dimensions and then you do operations like extrusions or chamfers and then um, it gives you the 3D model from that. And um, this model is fairly complex. It's built up of several different layers, which are printed as individual pieces and put together. One of the design challenges was building a um, hinge in plastic. Um, Normally, normally hinges would be done in metal, but I tried to do a design in plastic so the entire case could be 3D printed without buying parts. And the first, the first design was a 20-sided um, polyhedron. 
So when you rotate it, it snaps at different positions. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, I let my daughter play with it for testing. She's, um, she's 13. And after opening and closing it about 50 times, it was, it was perfectly round. So I need to come up with a new design for the hinge. So um, what I tried is this type of um, geometry. Uh, how are we doing on stickers? Sticker. Do you, do you have a sticker yet? Sticker. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> what 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 shape is this? <laughs> Very good. All right, sticker. <laughs> So the the design is it's two um how, how do you say it again? Say <laughs> Nihon. Yeah. Say Sang Say Sang Gake. Okay. So it's actually, actually just just not triangle. It's it, it means a perfect triangle. It's same. Oh, same oh so that's even it's a yeah, so even that's precise. That's that's <laughs> like an isosceles triangle in yes, English. Yes, yes. Oh, very good. Say Sang ga Gake. Okay, so there's two Seisong Gakes um, that are co-centric. How do you say? Yeah, so the same center. Same center, yes. Yes. And they're slightly different sizes. So this tolerance here is the difference in the size between the two triangles. And then the outside line is made by um, circumscribing the two triangles. So don't worry about it. Okay, so what you end up with is a shape which is a slightly, um, slightly rounded triangle. And so a shape like this will, when it rotates, it will... Um, um, overlap until it gets to 120 degrees and then it fits again. Um, this shows in Fusion 360 there's a interference mode and so the red section is the interference of the um, the hinge when it's 60 degrees off of um, alignment. And you, what will happen for the physical hinge is it will it will bend slightly, it'll stretch slightly to make room for the overlap, um, which makes the hinge a little bit pr provides a little bit of friction when you open and close it. And since it's a bending rather than a, a sharp edge, this can open and close many times without um, getting damaged. Okay, here's the um, um, a picture of Kira which is the um, software which takes the model and converts it to G-code instructions for the printer. <laughs> this is a picture of the um, print on the Ultimaker. So it's printing the bottom of the case. Um, here's a tray with some completed parts from the top of the case. Here I have um, all the parts for the case. So for somebody who doesn't have a sticker, 
maybe front. Do either of you have stickers yet? Sticker? No. no, no. Okay. Can, would you mind in the jacket? Can you count and tell us how many pieces? あの、ま、何個のパーツでできて、これが結局あの、このケースの全部のパーツなんですけど、これが一体何個のパーツでできてますか。Very good. Sticker. <laughs> okay, and then here's the buttons. Um, you just have to bend the pin slightly to make it fit in the case a little bit flatter. あ、ま、ボタンですね。で、中に and then some soldering. Um, here is the Raspberry Pi fit in the bottom of the case. Um, a battery. This battery is a 4,000 milliamp battery, so it'll last about six and a half hours running the Pi and the screen. Um, this is the Adafruit Power Boost that I use for charging it, um, and also it um, provides the power switch for the device. Here's the Kippa board that powers the LCD screen. And then um, the plastic holder for the buttons that fits on top. Um, another plastic holder which holds more buttons plus the speaker and the amplifier board. And then here's the um, LCD cable. You just wrap it in a little circle so it doesn't get um, damaged by opening and closing. あの、エルシーディ、まあ、あの、スクリーンにつなぐためのケーブルで、まあ、ラップ丸くしてありますと、まあ、ダメージ受けないように。And it connects to an extension board and then the um, LCD cable. まあ、つないでますね。Here's the two pins in the side which act as the hinge. さっきのヒンジもそうですけどね。Okay, how are we doing on stickers? I think maybe are you the last one without a sticker in the front? あ、あの、一番前の女性の方。持ってステッカー持ってませんよね。ああ、オッケー。そう、ウェブ、ウェブさ。ドゥ、ドゥユノワット、キャンユーゲスワットディスフォーライトヒア。ここのあの、スロット
まあ、出来上がり。Okay, so I have one final video game clip for you guys. Anybody know this game? じゃあ最後のもう一個、もう一個ゲームしてもらいますけど、誰かありますか、うん、うん、Okay, well this is Metroid. And、um, <laughs> if you beat the game and you find like all of the items inside the game, Then you get the, the good ending. So, the good ending, you find out that your,、um, your character well, your character is wearing a spacesuit, but actually, it's a woman, not a man, inside. Okay. So, I think that's a, a good example for、um, our industry. We need more main characters, who, more programmers. Who are also women. And my daughter is a young programmer. And she also helps me teach some kids' workshops、um, where we teach maybe middle school, high school kids to program. And at a, at, a young, at a young age, it's pretty good, maybe. 50, 50, 60, 40、ratio of girls to boys. ああ、それぐらいの年齢の子だと男女の差がもうほぼ同じぐらいの数でプログラマーがいると。So, if you have kids, you know, try to encourage them not to follow gender biases in、um, career. あの、まあ、男女の差なく、若い時にあのそういうことを導入してあげれば。まあ、男女の差のこう女性だからこうしなきゃいけないとか男性だからこうしなきゃいけないとかそういうことにとらわれずに育つんじゃないのかな。OK、So hopefully you guys learned a little bit today about、um, Raspberry Pi and、um, performance tuning and 3D printing。まあ、いろいろあの、まあ、ラズベリーパイだとかパフォーマンスチューニングだとか、まあ、3D プリンティングだとか勉強できたんじゃないでしょうかと。And we have to give you guys some books, right? We promised books. Yeah, two books. Two books. Okay, so the way this works is、um, Sebastian and I will both ask a question. And then you'll translate it to make it fair. Okay, sure. And then after the translation, you can raise your hand if you want to try to answer it. まあ、皆さん、手を挙げてくださいと。あのまあ、質問を訳したら、そこから手を挙げてくださいと。まあ、分かったからといって、先に挙げ,て挙げないでくださいと。Okay, so、um, earlier in my presentation, remember this picture? まあ、これを見ましたよね。Oh, so I, I mentioned that maybe there's a problem.、うんまあ、こ,れをこの時にあのまあちょっと問題があると、これ自身にもまあ欠点があるということを話したと思うんですけど、so、で、まあ、あるシチュエーション、これがまああの働かないことがありますと、それは何でしょう、うまくこう機能してくれないことがあります。Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. あはい、ジャンプ。Jump. Jump. Jump. Oh, can't jump. On the I, th I think Super Mario can't, can't jump. Oh, well. Maybe. Cut it. Ah,、uh, uh, can't, can't get the, you know, the vertical、uh, movement. I mean, ah, okay. So this isn't a complete picture. There's a Up and down button too.、Hmm? Oh, what, what did you say? Sorry. No, I said this, this is not a complete、oh. picture. There's also an up and down button. Oh, so、まあ、up, up and down button is also a good guess. Yeah, but good guess.、Mm -hmm. Good guess. Oh, yes. Okay. 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 It's、maybe you know, it gets sluggish to move left and right. Sluggish. Sluggish. I mean, sluggish. you know, the movement is not so. Okay,、smooth. okay, so that, that's possible if the diode, the diode speed.
So that's, that's a good one too. Okay, so I think I think I think we're gonna consider that the right answer tonight. <laughs> because actually it's it's correct that that's a problem with the diodes. The reaction speed of the diodes causes um performance issues. All right, so let me let me explain what I was thinking of, which is another problem. Mm. But you found a problem, so you get the book. Oh, <laughs> get So give him a round of applause first. <laughs> so the the other the other problem with this circuit is um, when you press start and you also press left. <laughs> then it can't tell that you have pressed left because the um, it's already triggered. But normally that doesn't matter because you don't press start and left. Except in Mike Tyson's punch out for uppercut. Start is uppercut. Mike Tyson no Alright, so very good. <laughs> Here you go. And I think Sebastian has a question. Yes. Um, why don't you use the why don't you grab the mic, Sebastian, and then give it back okay. to him. Thank you. So I have a challenging question too from my talk, of course. So I hope you remember my presentation and my live coding. And especially the live coding. I created some URIs using uh, an approach from Juxares, right? And I used some Juxares components to create these URIs. And specifically, I used one class from JuxRS to create URIs. Can you tell me the name of the class? Any guesses? Yes. Your right oh. info, you're correct. Very good. Very good. You just won a book. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys very much for coming to this um, evening Night Hacking Tour presentation. Um, on screen here are some resources which are helpful in learning Java. So um, I'll let you read it. It's probably better than... Give him the mic back. あ、いや、ここにあのリソースいろいろ書いてますので、これ参考にして、あの、見てくださいと後で。Uh, one one I think is is interesting to highlight. Where, where's my thing? The Java Magazine Japanese version. So, um there there's actually somebody in the local office um in Tokyo and mm -hmm. they translate the entire issue each um, time it comes out. So this is a really great resource to get mm. the magazine in Japanese. Ah, まあ、ここがすごくいい情報源ですと。まあ、日本の、あの、東京の方が訳して、はい、配信 well, well, してるらしいです. So, please subscribe, please follow what we're doing on the motorcycle tour and I hope you guys have enjoyed this evening. まあ、皆さん、あの、あの、今日はありがとうございましたと。ですね。Thank you. Mm. Okay, so do you want to say anything from the local office? Yeah.